These rebels are changing the way we work. Get the power to transform the way you work without having to change your workflow. Now all the insights you need are only one click away with Lexus for Microsoft Office. Escaping the tyranny of time, Ron Baker, the lead prosecutor of billable hour and timesheets. Ron? Thank you, Matt. Good afternoon, everybody. I did not come here to praise the billable hour. I came here to bury it. But not only the billable hour, but the timesheet. Because it's the timesheet that is the cancer in the profession. The billable hour is a symptom. The timesheet's the problem. The timesheet keeps us mired in the mentality that what we sell is time. And if we're going to take down the timesheet and the billable hour, we have to understand that this is a business model change. It's not just simply moving to alternative fee arrangements or fixed fees. It's a business model change. It redefines how you have a relationship with time. And business models are inherently disruptive, as Andy Grove lo loves to tell, loves to point out, especially in his book. So what is a business model? A business model is how you create and how you monetize the value that you create for your customers. That's how I'm defining a business model. It's creating value and it's monetizing or capturing a fair portion of that value for yourself. And what that means is we have to deal with both sides of this. I want to talk about the creation side and the capturing side. Obviously the capturing side is inextricably linked to your pricing strategy. Peter Drucker said that customers don't buy anything except value, the satisfaction of a want. That's absolutely true. And value is subjective. Value is like beauty. It is in the eye of the beholder. It is not determined by how many hours go into something. As Charles Rebson said, when, it crosses, when it's in the factory, it's lipstick. But when it crosses the counter in the department store, it's hope. There's a man who understood what his customers were buying, what their emotional appeal to the product was. That was the value, and he understood that it wasn't just a concoction of chemicals. Nobody goes into the Porsche dealership and says, oh, what an awesome car. Can I see the timesheets on that, please? I'd like to know how long it took Porsche to build it. Clients aren't buying your time, folks. They're not buying hours. Clients don't buy hours. I'm sure if we could buy time, we'd probably buy it from somebody cheaper than an attorney. People are buying your results. Clients don't care about the labor pains. They want to see the baby. They want to see the baby. The billable hour keeps both sides focused on the labor pains, the inputs, the efforts, the activities, the costs, the hours. All is irrelevant to value. So when Abraham Lincoln said that an attorney's stock and trade is his time, I love the guy, but he's wrong. He's wrong on this for a very simple reason. Clients don't buy hours. But this mentality has built what we call the firm of the past, the edifice of the traditional pyramid structure where we're leveraging people and we're, le and we're measuring utilization and we have hourly rates for everybody. And by the way, everything that we measure in a law firm dates back to the 1880s scientific religion, the scientific management religion, which is absolute hokum. So we call this the firm of the past. And the firm of the past business model, if you had to sum it up, is we sell time. Because look at what we measure. Look at all of our structures. All of our systems revolve around measuring time. Time is irrelevant. It's value. It's outputs. So we have to move into a knowledge economy the firm of the future. And as Einstein said, time is relative. Time is relative. You can't manage time and you can't leverage time. Time just passes. Bill Gates has as much time on this mortal coil as most of us, give or take. But his business model is and he sells time. So therefore, there's no ceiling on his income. Economists call this the distinction between a rival asset and a non-rival asset. If I give you a tie off my shirt, now you have it and I don't. That's a rival asset. It can only be one place at one time. But if I have a non-rival asset like knowledge or ideas or indeed the alphabet, all of us can use it at the same time without diminishing it for anybody else. What would you rather leverage, a rival asset or a non-rival asset? Obviously, you rather leverage a non-rival asset. And this is key because the billable hour is a rival asset. The two hours that you're going to spend here today, you'll never get back. You can't leverage it. 
So the firm of the future says we're not going to leverage hours, we're not going to leverage people, we're actually going to leverage intellectual capital, knowledge that can be converted into profit. We're not going to worry about people's efficiency, we're going to worry about their effectiveness, and we're going to charge a value price based on the value that we're creating for the people that we're serving. This business model says lawyers, clients buy intellectual capital. That's a far different business model than saying we sell time. Far different, with many ramifications. So if, if we're stuck in this mentality that the value of what we do is predicated by how many hours we spend, it's like arguing that the polio vaccine that Jonas Salk developed was valuable to the extent of the number of hours it took him to develop. That's an insane argument. Obviously, the value of that was much greater than the time it took him to develop. Merv Griffin, who's obviously no longer with us, wrote a song in his house on his home piano in less than a minute, the theme song to Jeopardy. He's earned $90 million since the late 1960s and counting for him and his estate. What do I put on his timesheet? What do I put on his timesheet? You mean that song is worth $90 million and it only took him a minute? Absolutely, because there is no standard price on ideas. We have a business model developed by this gentleman from 1919, Reginald Heber Smith. Can we really afford to have a business model that's 100 years old? Folks, it's time for this to change. And what I'm asking for you to do is forge with me a new declaration of independence and once and for all free the profession from the tyranny of time because nobody became a lawyer to build the most hours. I need your help. Thank you.